Welcome to the Getting Started with Felt series. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to upload data. With Felt, you can really upload any file format you want. In fact, there's even a button on the toolbar called Upload Anything. We support a ton of vector, raster, and spreadsheet formats, which can be brought in via the simple drag and drop of a file or the copy and paste of a URL. When it comes to vector data, Felt can handle most of the common formats, including Esri shapefiles, GeoJSON, GeoPackage, GeoParquet, and KMLs. It can handle GPS formats like GPX, TCX, and FIT files. You can import files up to 5 gigabytes in size, and these can be the original files or compressed versions. Felt can handle raster data like aerial and satellite imagery, digital elevation and terrain models, and surface temperature measurements in a variety of formats like GeoTIFF, raster geopackages, and much more. Felt can also handle geospatial data from tabular file formats like Excel spreadsheets, CSV, and numbers files. Felt not only handles latitude and longitude, but it will geocode data that contains street addresses and geomatch data referencing boundaries. We actually use artificial intelligence to identify the geometry columns in your data, and if it doesn't get it right on the first pass, you can manually select a column and simply reprocess. Now if you're not a big fan of dealing with files, you can also upload directly from a URL. Simply use the Upload from URL button and give your layer a name. It's as easy as that. This is actually an incredibly powerful feature that supports some special types of URLs for hosted data services, including Google Sheets, Google My Maps, XYZ Raster Tiles, and even Esri Map Servers. And last but certainly not least, you can even take layers and elements that you've created inside of a QGIS project and send them directly to your Felt map via the Add to Felt plugin for QGIS. For more information on how to upload data to Felt, check out our help documentation, which is linked in the video description. Be sure to check out the next episode in this series where I'm going to show you how to draw new data and annotate the map.